Hey there, Dan Martell here, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you how to rock your customer support process. Be sure to stay at the end because I'm gonna share with you an exclusive worksheet that's gonna allow you uh, to audit how you're doing on different levels of service, understand the uh, um, strategies available to you to upgrade those, and then build an action plan to help you move that forward. Let's get into it. Customer support is probably one of my favorite things to talk about. Here's why I believe, you know, as I've scaled multiple seven figure companies in the SaaS space, software as a service, um, even my last company, my venture back company, uh, Clarity, um, I personally did support for two years. Here's the reason why, is as a software guy, as a product guy, I've realized that most of the opportunity sits inside of your support tickets. The opportunity to learn from your customers, to guide product strategy, to understand marketing channels and hooks and people talk about growth hacks. I think the gold mine of any question you have about your business lies inside of your support um, tickets and most CEOs and founders quickly, it's like the first thing they delegate to somebody else and they never review them. So I'm not saying you have to do support, but be sure to dive into those tickets on a monthly basis and scan them because there's so much insight. But what I want to share with you today is how I was able to scale me doing that for two years and really um, always being involved in support to make sure that I've created the best customer experience because obviously you could see it could create a bottleneck, but instead we are recognized as having some of the best support in the industry. And today I have the privilege of coaching some of the smartest founders implement these strategies to create support processes that allowed them to scale their customer experience within their own company. So these are for me the five key strategies that you need to build world-class customer support. Number one, customer outcomes. So if you think of your customers that are reaching out for whatever issues they're having, often it's either gonna be, you know, obviously a technical issue that something's supposed to be working, it's not working the way expressed, or they're trying to get an outcome. And what I've discovered is for most companies, there's probably three to five primary um, kind of states or outcomes or goals they wanna achieve with your solution that they're, they're running into roadblocks. So what I would suggest is you sit down with the team and map out those outcomes so that you can then build playbooks to ensure that you get customers to receive that value a lot faster. At the end of the day, I call it you know core value. When somebody comes into your solution, your product, you've got literally days, if not less, ideally in the first time user experience, to get them to achieve an outcome with your solution if you want the chance to earn their business long term. If you're not mapping out their outcomes and you're not building a process to really guide them through achieving that core value, then you're gonna run into churn and retention issues or even just lack of ex what's called expansion revenue. People buying more product because they're succeeding with your solution. So number one, map those primary outcomes. What do you think customers ideally are trying to get as an end state and what would be the steps that they would follow to get that? Number two, support, support. It sounds funny, but the way I think about it is we need to build a training process to support our support team. Meaning that too often we're changing our products, we're enhancing flows, we're, we're tweaking settings, and many times we forget to tell our frontline support team and then they've got to deal with the repercussions. So what I like to implement is a cadence, a rhythm of training so that we have a place maybe every two weeks where we can add things that have changed in our products, tweaks to the way we're thinking of our solution, um, anything that needs to be communicated to the frontline support people, and also just core training. Like every support team member should have different tiers of um, seniority and experience, and it should be based on like their understanding of how the product works and allow them to have a training track. We want to support the support team so that they can upgrade their skills and be more aware of the lower level details of how your product works so they can support a broader audience of your customers in a faster way possible. So building out a repeatable process for training your team, supporting the support team, making sure they understand how escalation works, making sure they understand how customers are using those core outcomes or trying to achieve with your solution. That's how we ensure we have the best support team possible for our customers. 
Number three, flow escalation. So what that means is it doesn't matter what kind of business you are. You have kind of tier one level support requests. These are things that, you know, are, are configuration setting, just unawareness. They missed something. They didn't read the whole instructions, whatever. Tier one. Tier two is a little bit more involved, right? Where um, something should be working, but it's not. And maybe it's uh, the way the product is designed, but the support person just doesn't know how to configure it properly based on what the client's asking. That's tier two. Tier three for me is known issues, bugs, challenges. Um, you know, something that can be replicated, but it just doesn't make sense and we need to escalate. So we have tier one, two, and three, and it needs to be very clear to your support team how those challenges or issues or tickets are escalated into each tier. This is the critical step that's usually missed to create something world-class is on a daily basis, you need to have somebody accountable on your team. It could be one person across all tiers, but somebody daily needs to review the number of tickets in those support queues, those different tiers, and make sure they're being moved forward. Here's why I've discovered building software companies for 20 years is that most of the engineers, especially your like your support engineers, they're busy doing things. They kind of cherry pick. They want to do the things that are interesting to them. And they put off kind of like the annoying, frustrating customers. And I get it. No customer is frustrating. We love all our customers equally. That's usually not the case. And we need to make sure as a leader that our support team has accountability and on a daily basis, it's a must. So tiers of one, two, three, frontline, middle, kind of more challenging, and then obviously deeper technical, um, you know, trying to figure out this is core issues and then having somebody accountable daily to make sure each one of those tickets are moving forward and not left behind. Number four, measure the metrics. So customer support is probably one of the easiest outside of marketing to really measure how things are performing. So if you haven't looked at some of these core metrics, the top ones are typically time to first response, average time to open tickets, and I would say customer satisfaction or kind of like an NPS score. You can Google the different uh, mechanisms to report on that, but if you're using a support software, I guarantee they have this as part of their reporting in their dashboard. And what I would recommend is every week as part of your leadership team, you're reviewing those key metrics, you're setting some targets and some goals, and you're making sure you're monitoring against those goals so that you can get better and faster. Support, like any other area of the business, is an engine. You're trying to make it uh, increase throughput and having the data points to understand how you are today, the baseline so you can improve it, is critical to creating a great customer support experience. Number five, productize the knowledge base. So, if you currently have support tickets coming in, you're probably starting to see patterns, repeatable things that people ask for. Here's what I've discovered, is the fastest way for you to get more bandwidth, and this is what I was world-class at, two things. One, documenting and backfilling the lessons learned from a support point of view that I was interacting with clients on so that I could put those in the knowledge base. That's the public facing um, kind of directory of kind of like how to, you know, questions that come up. And then the second thing is using uh, automation and snippets. So if you haven't looked at like a hotkey snippet tool, uh, there's different ones for Mac and, and, um, and Windows machines. I'll let you Google kind of what's the current flavor of the week this week for those tools, but just like shortcut snippets, to, uh, text expander type tools. It allows support teams, you can create like pre-canned response, et cetera, to just quickly respond, high quality, engaged, personalized templates to, to support the customer. But my big thing is, this is what's hilarious is when I work with, with clients to scale their, their businesses, you know, again, customer success being a core area and support within customer success. Um, I asked to see their artifacts, the thing that the, the, the tools they've created to support their support team. And what happens is often those tools internally are what should be put externally. They are the checklist, the reference guides, the training that if they would just flip it a little bit and put those resources public, they would allow their customers to self-serve. Most companies today, this is some research that I found online, that most companies, 85%, would prefer to self-serve because usually it's like you know 10.30 at night and they're dealing with an issue and they just wanna figure out the solution. Emailing support makes no sense. Scheduling a call makes no sense. So using the tools like um, video screen capturing software. If you're not doing that, that's just crazy. So like being able to record your screen, share that as an audio and video message to your customers, encouraging them to send things back to you, keep it under three minutes. You have to give some cues. If not, you'll get 25 minute, um, you know, narratives of their support issues. But having that rich interaction 
um, grabbing those things, putting them public so your customers can self-serve and really productizing, thinking of your knowledge base like a product, like an asset that you invest in, that you plan for, that you coordinate with the, the product team to make sure that they give you a heads up on releases and milestones so that you can get the knowledge base articles ready to go. To me, that is just a core, that, that's when I know a company's really banging on a customer support level is when I check their knowledge base and I can tell it's being updated, it's frequent, it's relevant, it's really the taxonomy is really well designed. Um, that's when I know somebody's looking at that as a product. So quick recap, five strategies to rock your customer support process. Number one, focus on customer outcomes. Number two, support, support the team training, et cetera. Flow escalation, having those three tiers. Measure your metrics so you know how well you're doing, how to get better, and five, productize the knowledge base. Take those internal tools and put them out to the world. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I want to share with you an exclusive resource called the Customer Support Upgrader. In it, it's just a simple one-page worksheet, but it's got a list of really cool things. Number one, it's got kind of the core areas of support, everything from the knowledge base to your calls to your email systems, etc. Allow you to essentially rank on those dimensions. And then I'm going to give you a list of key strategies that you can use to get even more bandwidth to help you prioritize the next three upgrades that you can implement in your customer support team to take it to the next level. And you can use that worksheet every quarter to keep upgrading and enhancing your service, the quality of the experience to your customer. That's my gift to you. You can click the link below to get access to that. And if you like this video, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to my channel. And if there's anybody you think this video could serve that you care about, feel free to share it with them directly. As per usual, I want to challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business. And I'll see you next Monday. Thank <laughs> you.